Hi, good morning. This is Mansi Farke, deputy editor with the Print, and uh, joining me are my colleagues Moshmi Das Gupta and Madhuparna Das from Delhi, and Shankar Anumesh, who is currently posted in Ahmedabad, to bring us the latest trends from the ground. Uh, all four of us had uh, been on the field uh, pre-elections uh, to Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh to understand the trends uh, on the ground, and we'll try and make sense of these vis-a-vis -vis the uh, early trends that are pouring in based on uh, the counting so far. Uh, but you know, so far it's only been the postal ballots, which is a very minuscule part of the total vote. Uh, so things will only be clearer once we progress during the day. As of now, uh, what we are seeing is just trends. Um, let's start with Shankar Anumesh. Uh, hi, Shankar. Uh, you'd been to Himachal Pradesh and travelled extensively, and it seems like the BGP and Congress are neck and neck over there. Uh, how do you read this? देखिए मानसी अगर हिमाचल की बात करें तो हिमाचल में फिलहाल जो अर्ली ट्रेंड्स हैं जो शुरुआती रुझान हैं कई बार हम लोगों ने देखा है कि चुनाव में वो शुरुआती रुझान बाद में पलट भी जाते हैं लेकिन फिलहाल जो दिख रहा है वो बहुत ही कांटे की टक्कर दिख रही है और उसमें ऐसा भी हो सकता है कि बीजेपी की गाड़ी जो है वो पलट जाए क्योंकि कांग्रेस भी एज बना रही है हिमाचल में अब इसके अगर हम कारणों की का विश्लेषण करें अगर इसकी हम एनालिसिस करें तो कई सारे ऐसे फैक्टर थे हिमाचल में पहला जो इन्फ्लेशन जो महंगाई का मुद्दा था वो हिमाचल जैसे स्टेट में क्योंकि हिल स्टेट जो है वहाँ की बिल्कुल जो पॉलिटिक्स होती है डिफरेंट होती है और वहाँ पे गैस सिलेंडर का जो मुद्दा था वो काफी इम्पोर्टेंट मुद्दा था दूसरा कि जो बीजेपी के कई सारे रेवल खड़ा हुए आ, उन सब ने भी बीजेपी को नुकसान पहुंचाया होगा हालांकि जब हम आ, उनके वोटिंग परसेंटेज को जानेंगे देखेंगे कि कितना उन्होंने वोट काटा है तो उन्होंने बीजेपी का नुकसान निश्चित रूप से किया होगा इसके अलावा जो चीफ मिनिस्टर की अपनी जो पॉपुलरिटी थी चीफ मिनिस्टर अपने मंडी जिले में तो पॉपुलर हैं, उन्होंने मंडी में पिछली बार अगर आप देखें कि पिछली बार का जो विधानसभा था उसमें मंडी में बीजेपी ने 10 में से 9 सीटें जीती थी तो मंडी में तो बीजेपी अच्छा कर रही है लेकिन बाकी अक्रॉस जो बाकी इला, इलाके हैं जो शिमला जो पॉकेट है जो कांग्रेस का गढ़ माना जाता है तो शिमला रीजन में बीजेपी उतना बेहतर परफॉर्म करती हुई नहीं दिख रही है क्योंकि वो वीरभद्र सिंह का इलाका था तो ऐसे ढेर सारे फैक्टर हैं जिसकी वजह से हमें ये कांटे का टक्कर फिलहाल जो शुरुआती रुझान है जो पोस्टल बैलेट खुले हैं अब तो ईवीएम की भी काउंटिंग शुरू हो चुकी है तो उन सब में दिख रहा है कि वहां पे जबरदस्त मुकाबला है अब ये देखना होगा कि जब ये आ, आ, सारे बैलेट पेपर बारह एक बजे के बाद क्रिस्टलाइज होते हैं इनके नतीजे तो किस बीजेपी सत्ता में वापसी करती हुई दिखती है या फिर कांग्रेस को ऐतिहासिक रूप से जहां पे कांग्रेस की लोकल लीडरशिप चुनाव लड़ रही थी एक तरह से प्रियंका गांधी कुछ जगहों पे कैंपेन करने के लिए गई थी आ, लेकिन वो आ, बहुत सिग्निफिकेंट नहीं आता था तो लोकल लीडरशिप के बदौलत कांग्रेस वहां पे सत्ता में वापसी कर, करती है तो ये एक बहुत बड़ी बात होगी और कई सारे इसके निष्कर्ष पे निकाले जाएंगे कि किस तरह से राहुल गांधी आ, जहां पे जाते हैं वहां पे वो पूरा इलेक्शन जो पोलराइज हो जाता है फिर मोदी मराम राहुल की तो क्या कांग्रेस की ये स्ट्रैटी थी वो कामयाब हुई ये सारे कारणों की मीमांसा विश्लेषण हम आने वाले घंटों में करेंगे मानसी और अभी आप गुजरात में हैं वहां क्या माहौल है मानसी जिस जहाँ पे काउंटिंग हो रहा है उसके थोड़े से विजुअल आप देखें और थोड़े से देखें कि किस तरह से वहाँ पे बीजेपी के जो कार्यकर्ता है उत्साही कार्यकर्ता वो पहले से ही आ जमे है और ढेर सारे कार्यकर्ता जो हैं यहाँ पे मौजूद है इस काउंटिंग सेंटर पे और ये जो काउंटिंग सेंटर है एलडी इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज है और जहाँ पर मुख्यमंत्री भूपेंद्र पटेल की जो सीट है वहाँ की काउंटिंग भी इस मतगणना केंद्र पे हो रही है और भूपेंद्र पटेल पिछली बार अगर 2017 के विधानसभा चुनाव को देखें तो हाइएस्ट मार्जिन से उन्होंने विक्ट्री हासिल की थी तकरीबन सवा लाख के आसपास का उनका विक्ट्री मार्जिन था और इस समय भी वो तीस हजार से ज्यादा की बढ़त बनाए हुए हैं इसके अलावा मणिनगर विधानसभा जो कि ऐतिहासिक विधानसभा है जहां पे प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जब गुजरात के मुख्यमंत्री थे तो इसी विधानसभा से चुनाव लड़ते थे वहां की भी काउंटिंग यहां पे हो रही है अमित ठक्कर बीजेपी के नेशनल यूथ प्रेसिडेंट रहे लेकिन बीस सालों तक उन्हें संघर्ष करना पड़ा टिकट पाने के लिए वो अपने सीट से विजलपुर से इस समय आगे चल रहे हैं बारह तेरह की लीड है तो आठ विधानसभा की काउंटिंग इस काउंटिंग सेंटर पे हो रहा है लेकिन अगर पूरे ओवरऑल गुजरात की बात करें तो बीजेपी शुरुआती रुझान में निश्चित रूप से एक बड़ी विक्ट्री की तरफ बढ़ती हुई दिखाई दे रही है अगर 126, 130 के आंकड़ों को देखें तो बीजेपी अपने 2002 के 
का जो नरेंद्र मोदी का जो पहला चुनाव था उसको प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी बीट करते नजर आ रहे हैं गुजरात की विधानसभा चुनाव में यानी कि मुख्यमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी के आंकड़ों को प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी क्योंकि गुजरात का विधानसभा चुनाव बाई एन लार्ज नरेंद्र मोदी का चुनाव होता है और इसलिए जो वोट पड़ता है वो साहेब के नाम पे यानी कि मोदी के नाम पे पड़ता है तो वैसी स्थिति में एक तरह से नरेंद्र मोदी का ही चुनाव कहा जाएगा वो अपने आंकड़े को बीट करते हुए नजर आ रहे हैं दो के आंकड़ों को और अगर इलेक्शन कमीशन की वेबसाइट को देखें तो वहां पे जो बीजेपी को वोट शेयर फिलहाल गुजरात में मिलता दिख रहा है वो बावन परसेंट का वोट शेयर है यानी कि पिछले बार की तुलना में सिग्निफिकेंट इजाफा हुआ है बीजेपी के वोट शेयर में तो ये सारी महत्वपूर्ण मुद्दे हैं जो हम आने वाले घंटों में इसकी चर्चा करेंगे साथ ही जो प्रोमिनेंट दो के जो नायक थे यानी कि जिग्नेश भवानी हार्दिक पटेल ये सब अपनी सीटों पर आगे चल रहे हैं हार्दिक पटेल हालांकि शुरुआती रुझान में वहां पे आपका कैंडिडेट आगे चल रहा था जो एक बहुत बड़ा सेटबैक उनके लिए हो सकता है लेकिन बाकी जो 2017 के पार्टीदार आंदोलन के जो नायक थे वो अपनी सीटों पर बढ़त बनाए हुए हैं थैंक यू शंकर बट दिस इज एक्टली वॉट ऑल ऑफ अस यू नो सॉ इन गुजरात इट वुड इज द बीजेपी विंस इट वुड बी इट सेवें टर्म नाउ एंड येट देर वॉज a uh, very little anti incumbency that uh, we could sense on the ground and uh, even when we spoke to a lot of locals uh, you know across uh, different parts of gujarat uh, they would say that yes there are these issues there is you know uh, inflation was uh, one issue that everybody spoke about a lot but then they were like what so what i mean jo bhi chal raha hai modi ji uh, chala rahe wo acha hi kar rahe hai hamare uh, gujarat se hai so that sentiment is very strong and uh, although there were small issues such as uh, not, not small there were many issues such as uh, the morbi bridge collapse the mudra drugs hall or even the way uh, uh, that uh, you know people were disillusioned with the way the government had handled the whole covid situation but none of these issues really snowballed into one major wave that could take the bjp down and uh, uh, i would like to pull in moshmi here because uh, morbi's early trends indicate that despite uh, the entire controversy surrounding the bridge collapse uh, bjp is leading in morbi so uh, moshmi can you bring that in the can- they change their candidate and the candidate that uh, they have brought in ended up being a hero for morbi during the controversy so could you uh, could you tell us a little bit about that yeah right mansi thanks uh, so uh, i we visited morbi and when we were on the ground we were talking to the people uh, the families of the victims we could see palpable anger there because everybody was talking about uh, you know post the accident i mean the shoddy way the uh, the the local government there had gone about you know taking action against those uh, who were responsible for it uh but then the bjp played a master stroke by fielding this old rss hand its five time mla kantilal amrutia who is uh, popularly known as kanha bhai there uh kantilal amrutia uh, mansi let me tell you right now uh, going by the tv early trends early trends of the postal ballot kantilal amrutia is leading uh, but kantilal amrutia was a candidate uh, i mean he had won from the seat since 1995 he has been winning from the seat okay. from uh, for 27 years but in 2017 he lost to the congress's brijesh mirja and uh, i mean the bjp says that it was because of the partidar agitation that the uh, i mean bjp lost that seat which is which was a traditional you know bjp bastion but kantilal amrutia was again i mean uh, after after uh, the bjp lost to uh, brijesh mirja brijesh mirja joined the congress and subsequently there was a bipole in uh, 2020 and in the bipole uh, kantilal amrutia was not given a ticket and brijesh mirja was given a ticket from morbi and he won in fact uh, for the 2022 election also there was lot of talk going on whether mirja should be again get given a ticket from the bjp or should kantilal be given ticket so there was a indecision but the morbi collapse post the morbi collapse the bjp decided that you know kantilal amrutia would be fielded also because he has you know he's a old rss hand and he has been in the forefront i mean be it the you know uh, saving the victims during the bridge collapse on october 30 he jumped into the river the videos went viral even before that during the covid pandemic 
he was the locals say that he was in the forefront helping people taking people to hospital feeding them before that during the machu uh, dam uh, dam collapse uh, dam burst he was there in the forefront so he has a kind of a reputation he enjoys massive goodwill uh, among the public so bjp took a gambit in fielding uh, amrutia so uh, i mean up to that extent yes i think if we go by the you know initial trends it seems to be paying off because amrutia is leading from the seat uh, we have a question from one of our members aditya uh, uh, he he wants to know uh, do you think uh, it will be a big loss for the congress in gujarat and they need to revamp its gujarat team well early trends indicate a very uh, poor showing for for the congress in gujarat uh, uh, i track the congress's campaign a little bit so i'll uh, i'll uh, give a part of the answer and then uh, you know bounce the question to madhuparna who traveled in a lot of tribal and muslim belts in uh, gujarat which have traditionally been the congress's vote bank uh, so from the congress's campaign uh, last election the congress actually had a very strong showing where uh, you know uh, uh rahul gandhi campaigned aggressively across gujarat and held a lot of rallies and there was a lot of high pandit uh, narrative of vikas gando thayoche uh, uh, really struck a chord with people so this time on the ground the hype was completely missing in the rhetoric it seemed like the competition is between the bjp and uh, the aap and congress is somehow nowhere in, in nowhere in the picture uh, but when i spoke to the congress's team there they said that they were trying a different uh, a strategy this time where instead of creating a lot of hype they were working from the ground up and uh, for the uh, about 3 or 4 months before the election they started this entire uh, exercise of putting their booth level teams in place and uh, uh, identifying uh, you know polling uh, stations and uh, categorizing them into a b c and d where a being a sure shot win for the congress uh, b being which is you know sort of uh, a close shave uh, c being it's a lost cause to the idea was to basically convert c to b and b to a uh, they had also brought in a lot of senior experienced mlas and ministers from from the neighboring states of gujarat into gujarat uh, uh, to spearhead uh, all of this groundwork uh, but you know clearly early trends show that maybe they started this a little too late the bjp does this 24/7 i mean they are constantly in election mode their campaign committees are constantly activated booth level committees are working uh for people uh, literally around the year uh so yeah that that's that's about the congress's campaign uh, i would like to pull in madhuparna here to tell us a little bit about the congress's core vote bank in uh, gujarat and uh, the bjp has been aggressively trying to reach out to the tribals uh, do you think that is working and how does the muslim vote look like uh thanks mansi Uh, so yes uh, congress is uh, primary vote bank uh, as we call it captive vote bank that has that has always been the tribal vote bank in gujarat so i i have traveled to i had traveled to uh, east of gujarat which is uh, dahod district so there are five constituencies primarily uh, dominated by uh, tribal voters so of these five uh, constituencies bjp had only two and uh, three of them they were with uh, congress and uh, all these constituencies had congress mlas like three term four term so uh, for example dahod uh, and the early trends are saying that you know bjp is leading in dahod so uh, the bjp candidate he uh, he has just uh, fought one election in dahod this is the second time he's fighting this assembly election he lost in 2017 and uh, this time he is apparently as of now he is leading uh, but the congress mla who had um, who had this history of uh, winning from that very seat uh, for three times that congress candidate was replaced by a new candidate so apparently it was again a power struggle so this new person used to be the uh, the district president and he he has become the candidate and the actual the the, the candidate who had, who had won so he was uh, he was made uh, something in the structure he he was made uh, the district president so this was kind of a swap but the, now when i was traveling uh, through the district uh, and the constituencies so the tribal votes they are actually their congress voters you know uh, these places these places have witnessed lot of uh, conversion also so they feel that now they have started feeling that they are not even hindus and bjp is trying to you know make them something or uh, force them to some religion which actually uh, they they are 
I mean, they don't belong to that religion. That is what they think. So uh, also they get uh, helps from the local churches in terms of financial help, in terms of social uh, help, I mean, everything, uh, treatment and everything. So they generally convert and it has been happening for not now, like uh, for over, let's say one, a decade or so. Right. And Congress actually support this. So Congress MLAs, they always uh, support this and they actually facilitate uh, this kind of things. So that is one thing Congress has always, you know, uh, Congress has always won in this seats. But this time, uh, since RSS, uh, the Sangh Parivar, they also, you know, lent a hand to the BJP, they tried uh, doing certain things like uh, they, I, I was talking to them, I was traveling to some of the, uh, you know, their booth committees and their mandals. So these people, so they have actually, they have people as in charge of Dharam Jagaran. It's not Ghar Vapsi uh, per se, but it's Dharam mm -hmm. Jagaran. So what they are doing, they are, uh, since Ghar Vapsi thing is very, very low in that mm -hmm. part of Gujarat. People do not really uh, reconvert like people do in Jharkhand or Chhattisgarh. So what they are doing, they're saying that, you know, if if we have like lost 10% or 20% or 30% of tribal votes to this conversion thing, because once you are converted to Christianity, you are not going to vote for BJP. That is the general idea they have. So now uh, they want to retain uh, those who are already there and yet to convert. So what they are doing, they are doing it through certain economic initiatives. So they have started running um, small saving schemes uh, through RSS run trusts. They are not really bank, they are cooperative societies mm -hmm. and uh, they collect money and they give like 4% you know, interest uh, on the small savings scheme, which is huge for the uh, tribal villages. Also, they, uh, uh, they can borrow money. I mean, they also offer loans and everything. So these are things that this is this, this is very economic thing. So this is related to money. So when money comes into play, then religion, all these things can take up you know, Actually, yeah. for, for a while. So they are trying to retain their tribal votes like this way. And uh, apparently, uh, we will see, uh, you know, uh, how yeah. the how the counting progresses, we will see how this region, uh, the result takes place. But then, as of now, they are leading, which is apparently uh, kind of a big thing uh, for the RSS BJP combined in the tribal region. Uh, Aditya has another question. Will BJP continue with Bhupendra Patel or may try someone with a new uh, or may try a new chief ministerial face? Uh, well, leaders have unequivocally indicated that uh, uh, Bhupendra Patel will uh, continue to be chief minister if the BJP wins in Gujarat, uh, wins another term in Gujarat. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, pull in Shankar on this. Uh, uh, you are you are currently where the counting for the Ghatlodia seat is also going on. Uh, generally, uh, what is your reading about why the BJP puts its trust in uh, Bhupendra Patel? Mansi, uh, there are many factors. The first factor is that Bhupendra Patel is a lightweight politician, which is BJP's central leadership, which is uh, high command, that is yani Narendra Modi and Amit Shah. It is a suit that Gujarat's politics, which is Delhi, se controlled by Delhi, is the same way. So, in this city, mein ek Yes, man, who is a lightweight politician, he is sitting in the city of Gujarat. Because you can see that the CMO, or the Chief Minister's office, is also the most popular bureaucrat of Narendra Modi, who is the Kalash Nathan, who is the CMO, 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 who is पूरी कैबिनेट को बदल दो यानी कि रूपानी कैबिनेट के ज्यादातर सदस्यों की छुट्टी हो गई चीफ मिनिस्टर को बदल दिया गया तो गुजरात में बीजेपी ने और बाकी स्टेट में भी बीजेपी ने ये एक्सपेरिमेंट किया है कि जो एंटी इनकम्बेंसी होती है उनको ये लगता है कि एंटी इनकम्बेंसी सरकार की नहीं होती एंटी इनकम्बेंसी जो होती है आइदर चीफ मिनिस्टर की होती है या मिनिस्टर की होती है तो अगर किसी स्टेट में सत्ता हासिल करनी है तो या तो चीफ मिनिस्टर को बदल दो या फिर मिनिस्टर को बदल दो जो रूपानी को बदल के किया अब ये तय नहीं है कि भूपेंद्र पटेल कितने दिनों तक रहेंगे हालांकि अमित शाह ने ये घोषणा की और बीजेपी हाईकमान ने घोषणा की है कि भूपेंद्र पटेल ही मुख्यमंत्री रहेंगे लेकिन अगर ऐसी स्थिति कभी भी बनती है कि एंटी इनकम्बेंसी उनके खिलाफ होती है और बीजेपी हाईकमान को ये सेंस लगता है कि भूपेंद्र पटेल आने वाले दिनों में यानी कि अगला विधानसभा चुनाव या फिर 
2024 का विधान लोकसभा चुनाव लीड नहीं कर सकते तो भूपेंद्र पटेल की कभी भी छुट्टी हो सकती है क्योंकि भूपेंद्र पटेल का कोई ऐसा पोलिटिकल वेट नहीं है पिछली बार जब उन्होंने विधानसभा का चुनाव लड़ा था पहला उनका विधानसभा का चुनाव था आनंदी बेन पटेल की सीट थी जहां से वो इस समय निर्वाचित होने की प्रक्रिया में है और दो का भी जो विधानसभा चुनाव लड़ा था हाइएस्ट मार्जिन से लड़ा था गुजरात में तो एक तरह से भूपेंद्र पटेल शूट करते हैं क्योंकि पाटीदार आंदोलन की वजह से पिछली बार बीजेपी को बहुत ज्यादा डैमेज हुआ था तो एक उन्हें सांकेतिक रूप से जिसको कहते हैं ऑप्टिक्स के लिए एक पाटीदार का व्यक्ति उन्हें चुनना था ऐसा नहीं कि पाटीदार का कोई हैवी वेट नितिन पटेल जो कि डिप्टी चीफ मिनिस्टर थे उनको चुन लिया जाता लेकिन बीजेपी ने सोचा कि एक नई स्लेट पर फिर से शुरुआत करते हैं और इसलिए सबको बदल दिया गया तो इस समय भूपेंद्र पटेल छूट करते हैं और चूंकि बीजेपी एक हिस्टोरिक मैंडेट की तरफ बढ़ रही है और जो हेडलाइंस एक तरह से कहें कि कल के अखबारों की ये हो सकती है कि मुख्यमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी के रिकॉर्ड को प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी ने तोड़ा कि यानी कि 2002 में जब पहला चुनाव नरेंद्र मोदी पोस्ट गोधरा लड़ रहे थे तो उनका जो अपना रिकॉर्ड था दो सौ सीटों का उसको इस समय बीजेपी बीट करते हुए दिख रही है और बीजेपी ने जो क्लेम किया था कि वो माधव सिंह सोलंकी के रिकॉर्ड को भी तोड़ देंगे तो सी आर पाटिल तो जो फार्मूला था पेज कमेटी का वो लगता है कि इस समय सक्सेसफुल होते हुए दिख रहा है तो इसमें सिर्फ नरेंद्र मोदी का क्रेडिट नहीं है बल्कि सी आर पाटिल की जो माइक्रो मैनेजमेंट है मैन टू मैन मार्किंग का जो उनका फार्मूला था वो कहीं ना कहीं सक्सेसफुल होते हुए दिख रही है अच्छा ये भूपेंद्र पटेल ऑन स्पीकिंग ऑन दिस टॉपिक माय कॉलीग पूर्वा एंड आई व्हेन वी विजिटेड गुजरात एट टू डिफरेंट टाइम्स वी हैड आल्सो डन अ डीप डाइव प्रोफाइल ऑन हु भूपेंद्र पटेल रियली इज एज अ पॉलिटिशियन सो पूर्वा हैड विजिटेड घाटलोडिया एंड स्पोकन टू अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल हु हैव नोन भूपेंद्र पटेल थ्रू हिज यू नो थ्रू आउट हिज पॉलिटिकल करियर एंड ही एंजॉयज अ लॉट ऑफ गुडविल इन हिज ओन कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी व्हिच प्रोबेबली आल्सो एक्सप्लेन्स द फैक्ट विनिंग मार्जिन Uh, that he delivered for the BJP in 2017, and uh, the other thing that go that goes in Bhupendra Patel's uh, uh, favor is that he is very popular and accessible among Karya Kartas. Uh, so uh, people told me that he literally prefers to sit, uh, you know, uh, within people, uh, uh, right outside an office rather than inside, so that he more people can come and talk to him and he can interact uh, with uh, the regular Karya Kartas more. Even now that he is Chief Minister, he ensures that he holds his public darbar once a week and. Hundreds of people come, and he tries and speaks to uh, each and every one about their issues. Uh, he, uh, he also, when there is a party program, I think there was a, a, one example of uh, some uh, bridge inauguration was given to me, uh, where Amit Shah was supposed to come and inaugurate the particular uh, uh, project. Uh, Bhupendra Patel actually arrived thirty minutes in advance rather than arriving in the car with Amit Shah. Uh, because he said that I knew all my karyakartas would be here, so I'll use this time to uh, talk to you. You guys have worked hard for this, uh, 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 you know, for the inauguration ceremony, so on and so forth. So his popularity among karyakartas, uh, the fact that he uh, has risen up the ranks uh, from you know a councillor to a standing committee chairman to uh, the Gujarat Development Authority uh, chairman, and then finally handpicked by Modi as MLA, also work in uh, his favour. and the fact that he he doesn't like to talk to the media at all uh, he is not given a single media interview and it's not just now uh, what i'm told is he's always been like that uh, the bjp pr team has tried to pull him into television debates uh, to speak on particular talk especially about urban topics uh, since he comes from that particular con- constituency as well but he has always refused and uh, his speeches are also uh, typically very short about 10 to 15 minutes unlike a chief minister of any state who usually you know likes to uh, make his presence felt so all of these things work uh, in bhupendra patel's favor when the bjp uh, 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 sees him as a, uh, as a yes man or chief ministerial candidate uh, we have another question from siddhant kumar uh, who is asking congress has a better chance in himachal pradesh than gujarat do you think rahul gandhi should have campaigned in himachal pradesh and sealed the deal there uh, shankar can you talk about this राहुल गांधी ने वहां कैंपेन ज्यादा करना चाहिए था इट वु 
देखिए जो मुझे अब तक सवाल आपका सुनाई दिया या समझ में आया क्योंकि पीछे कार्यकर्ताओं की आवाजें हैं कि हिमाचल में जो कांग्रेस का परफॉर्मेंस है और गुजरात में जो कांग्रेस का परफॉर्मेंस है क्योंकि राहुल गांधी ने गुजरात में थोड़ा बहुत कैंपेन किया हिमाचल में उन्होंने कैंपेन नहीं किया और हिमाचल में बेहतर नतीजे कांग्रेस के पक्ष में जाते हुए दिखाई दे रहे हैं देखिए कांग्रेस का जो हिमाचल में परफॉर्मेंस है उसमें आ, मुझे नहीं लगता कि सेंट्रल लीडरशिप का कोई कंट्रीब्यूशन है अगर इसको बहुत ही ब्लंट तरीके से कहा जाए कि उसमें राहुल गांधी प्रियंका गांधी का कोई कंट्रीब्यूशन या रोल नहीं है उसमें अगर रोल है तो वहाँ की बीजेपी की जो सरकार के खिलाफ जो एंटी इनकम्बेंसी थी यहाँ वहाँ पे जो महंगाई का मुद्दा था वहाँ पे जो पेंशन का मुद्दा था वो काफी प्रमुख मुद्दा था और जो सरकारी कर्मचारियों की जो संख्या है वो काफी सिग्निफिकेंट है हिमाचल में क्योंकि तो हिमाचल के हर परिवार में आप देखेंगे एक व्यक्ति तो जरूर सरकारी नौकरी में है और वहाँ पे ओल्ड पेंशन का जो स्कीम का जो मुद्दा था वो काफी प्रज्वलित हो चुका था और काफी वहाँ पे वोटर्स के दिमाग में उसका इम्पैक्ट था दूसरा जो इन्फ्लेशन का इशू था आप याद करें कि जो मंडी लोकसभा का जो बाइपोल हुआ था जिसमें प्रतिभा सिंह जीती थी तो उस इलेक्शन के बाद चीफ मिनिस्टर जयराम ठाकुर ने खुद ही एडमिट किया था कि महंगाई का मुद्दा काफी मंडी लोकसभा चुनाव को इम्पैक्ट किया है तो इन्फ्लेशन का मुद्दा था इसके अलावा जो सरकार के खिलाफ एंटी इनकम्बेंसी थी वो एक तरह से कहें कि कांग्रेस की लीडरशिप में कांग्रेस को जो उनकी झोली में अपने आप वोट वहां पे पड़ रहा था और वहां पे आप देखें कि वीरभद्र सिंह के जाने के बाद उनका कोई एक सर्वसम्मान्य नेता नहीं है क्योंकि वीरभद्र सिंह एक जॉइंट लीडर थे अब वहां पे जो कांग्रेस में जो लीडरशिप है वो अलग अलग पॉकेट्स के लीडरशिप है प्रतिभा सिंह जो है वो आ, एक तरह से शिमला जहाँ पे वो रहती है वहां से उनके आसपास शिमला के इलाके में जो कांग्रेस बहुत पहले से अच्छा परफॉर्म करती रही है वीरभद्र सिंह के कारण तो इसलिए वहां पे कांग्रेस का होल्ड है आप देखें कि सुखू का अपने एक पॉकेट में इन्फ्लुएंस है उसी तरह से जो लीडर पर पोजिशन अग्निहोत्री है उनका अपने पॉकेट्स में इन्फ्लुएंस है तो कांग्रेस वहां पे जो बेहतर परफॉर्मेंस कर रही है परफॉर्म कर रही है वो लोकल लीडरशिप के कारण कर रही है वहां पर सरकार के खिलाफ एंटी इनकम्बेंसी थी उसके कारण बेहतर परफॉर्म कर रही है और जो हिमाचल का एक ट्रेंड है कि हर बार वहां पर जनता सत्ता बदल देती है तो जो पार्टी की टक्कर दिख रही है वो उन मुद्दों के कारण दिख रही है न कि राहुल गांधी और प्रियंका गांधी के कारण दिख रही है जहां तक गुजरात की बात है तो गुजरात में शंकर सिंह बघेला जो कांग्रेस के एक बड़े पुराने दिग्गज नेता रहे केंद्र सरकार में मंत्री भी थे चीफ मिनिस्टर भी रहे तो उनसे जब मैंने पूछा था तो उन्होंने कहा कि देखिए राहुल गांधी को जो दो में एक तरह से स्टेटबैक मिला या जो उनका पॉलिटिक्स का अनुभव है वो बड़ा बेटर रहा और इसलिए राहुल गांधी अब पॉलिटिक्स को एक दूसरे प्रिज्म से यानी कि एक दूसरे व्यू पॉइंट से दूसरे पर्सपेक्टिव से देखते हैं और इसीलिए राहुल गांधी ने गुजरात में ना ज्यादा जोर लगाया ना हिमाचल में जोर लगाया उनको लगता है कि ये सारे विधायक चुनकर आएंगे और कल की तारीख में ये बिक जाएंगे ये सब... we'll let's talk about the aam aadmi party here the aam aadmi party created a splash uh, you know starting campaigning a few months before elections in gujarat created a rhetoric where it was it seemed it it pr- projected itself as the principal opposition to the bjp uh, early trends show that it's needing an about 7 or 8 seats uh, moshmi had traveled to saurashtra uh generally uh, how did it seem like over there because i, I ask about saurashtra because some of its seats are coming from there and uh, the aam aadmi party had put up a, a decent showing in the rajkot and uh, uh, surat municipal corporation elections uh, can you talk a little bit about that and then i can probably chime in with surat yeah yes mansi you are right so you know uh, aam aadmi saurashtra is the one region where the aam aadmi party's campaigning had a buzz uh, i mean we, i i traveled in ahmedabad also in porbandar in north gujarat Uh, the aam aadmi party has fielded candidate everywhere but you know you could not see the buzz on the ground mm. and saurashtra is one region probably where they had a presence mm. on the ground their campaigning had certain buzz so if we talk of saurashtra uh, mansi 
Of the 182 assembly seats in Gujarat, 48 comes from Saurashtra region. And Saurashtra region is one, see, is the nerve center of the Patidar community, the Patel community. And in 2017, because of the Patidar agitation, BJP suffered the most in Saurashtra region. In fact, you know, uh, of the 48 seats in 2017, BJP won just 19 seats, which is which was like, uh, I mean, if you compare it with 2012, BJP had 130 seats from Saurashtra region. And Congress, on the other hand, uh, from the Saurashtra region uh, in 2017, it won 28 seats. So there was a massive lead that the Congress got and the total tally of the Congress, the total tally of 77 was in fact on the back of their performance in the Saurashtra region. Mm -hmm. So that's why in, in this backdrop, Saurashtra was very important for the BJP this time. And they focused their campaigning also in Saurashtra region. In November itself, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Prime Minister Narain Modi campaigned in Saurashtra four times. He went to Rajkot, he, I mean, and the different parts of Saurashtra because they were not leaving anything to chance. Right. So that that is one, but uh, the Aam Aadmi Party also, you know, uh, the uh, initial trends are showing right now that Aam Aadmi Party is leading in 12 seats and most of that come, come from the Saurashtra region. Mm -hmm. So uh, that it would be interesting to see, I mean, how in fact, I mean, uh, if we go by the initial trend, it looks like Aam Aadmi Party would dislodge Congress and become the second uh, the, the second party, the uh, principal opposition party there in the Saurashtra region. Although by a huge margin, I mean, the BJP would yeah, yeah, that's far a, ahead. Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, that yeah. goes without saying because yeah. the BJP's number would be because of its performance, because of its better performance in uh, Saurashtra region where the Partidar community, uh, I mean, uh, after the 2017 agitation, they were back in the BJP fold. But this time around, they have completely aligned themselves. And what has helped them is the Supreme Court upholding the center's decision on 10% reservation for the EWS. So that mm -hmm. has gone a long way in, you know, uh, uh, getting the party does back to the fold. Right. I mean, uh, we have a... I mean how AAP delivers here, as in uh, how AAP performs, because if you remember, Bansi, you have you have spoken about it and you have done a story also, in fact, how AAP had, you know, done so well during the Surat municipal election. Right. So it has got, it got, it won some 27 seats there. Right. Uh, that's right. And uh, Saurashtra and Surat are the two places because it had a few councillors. Uh, app also had a base of its own, you know, a ground cadre of its own to uh, actually connect a, uh, connect with the people as against in other places where uh, most of the cadre and their candidates were borrowed and uh, largely from the Congress. Uh, but in Surat, what happens is, uh, say, in one particular constituency, there could be the winning margins for the AAP municipal corporation in Surat. Uh, if you see the losing margins for the BJP were not as, as huge in those particular seats. So uh, a one particular constituency may have a couple of wards uh, from, you know, where the AAP had won in Surat, but a lot of those wards where the BJP had a good vote share. So all in all, in an assembly election, it did not really translate into, uh, uh, you know, a lot of goodwill for uh, Amati party in terms of pure arithmetic. Um, lastly, uh, let's, uh, before wrapping this up, uh, Moshmi had also done a very interesting story from uh, the constituency where Prime Minister Narendra Modi hails from, from where Vadnagar, uh, of which Vadnagar is a part. And the entire election in Gujarat was fought on Modi's name and uh, the BJP is possibly winning it on Modi's name. And yet this is one constituency which is a blank spot uh, in the BJP's uh, narrative where the BJP has not been able to win. Why is that? Uh, Mansi, again, I mean, the, this is a Unja constituency, Unja assembly constituency, uh, under which Vatnagar comes, uh, where, you know, Prime Minister Modi was born and he studied there, it's his hometown. So, in fact, it was uh, very embarrassing for the BJP back in 2017, though BJP won in the state and BJP rules the center. So, uh, that, that that's why it was all the more embarrassing that the BJP lost from the seat where from where uh, I mean Prime Minister Modi comes. 
And one of the reasons uh, why BJP lost in 2017 was, of course, uh, I mean, the, the BJP uh, leaders, they say, was because of the Partidar agitation. Also, the BJP's candidate there, Narayan Bhai Patel, who has been winning from the seat from for five terms. So there was a huge anti-incumbency against him also. So that's why uh, the, the Mansi, this time around, the BJP decided to field a, a you know, first timer, KK Patel. He's an old RSS hand. And, uh, you know, he has been associated with the RSS for the last 35 years. And uh, fielding Patel ensured that, you know, the RSS uh, forces were behind the BJP on the ground. The RSS cadre were campaigning for Patel. So, uh, in fact, the initial trend should show, show that KK Patel is leading from Unjhasi. Uh, uh, from the Congress, uh, Arvind Amritlal uh, Patel, who has been fielded, is trailing. Again, compared to KK Patel, uh, the Congress candidate is pretty weak because you know he is a relatively unknown face there. He is a farmer. He has he has been a uh, Congress worker, but he doesn't has that kind of a face. KK Patel, because of his RSS link, because he uh, he runs an educational institute there, has uh, I mean a bit of a popularity in that uh, in that region. So it would be okay. interesting to see how BJP how this shapes up. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Moshmi. Thanks a lot, Madhu Parna, for joining us from Delhi. And uh, thank you, Shankar, for giving, bringing us updates from the ground in Ahmedabad. Uh, we will uh, wrap this up here, but please keep uh, tracking the print for uh, analysis and updates on the Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh election results. Thank you.